we're going to take a look here at using the smart board as an effective whiteboard. Instead of interactive whiteboard, we're going to look at it as an effective whiteboard. Because sometimes standing up and actually teaching and writing on the board is the most effective way to teach the lesson. So we're going to take a look at a math lesson, specifically long division. So forget about the content, forget that it's long division. Think about your content and think about a process, something where there are steps. I'm going to do a long division problem. Uh, 687 divided by 5. And I'm going to divide this into three sections. This is where I'm going to write down what I'm thinking. And here we'll put the steps. So we have that to remember the steps of long division. So I have a little table. Could I have used the straight lines and everything? Sure. But if I was doing this live, uh, you know, is it effective? Does it work? Does it divide it into the sections I need? Yes. Is it as pretty as the straight lines? No. One way to use the smart board as an effective whiteboard is to use the colors. You've got four pens. Use them. So I'm going to start with and I'm going to ask the students, right, so what's the first step? And we'll get that the first step is to divide. So we look at our problem here, and what do we divide? So the first thing we're going to divide is 6 divided by 5. And the students, you know, this is where they're helping and they're interacting, and they tell me that it's 1. And I put the answer up there. Now I'm going to come here into the page sorter. And the drop down arrow on page two there, and I want to clone this page. So now I have page two, page three, they're identical. Page three is the one selected right now because that's the one with the blue highlight around it. And now we're going to go and say, okay, what's the second step? And the second step is the multiply. So I'm going to switch to the red pen. So whenever I do the multiply step, it's going to be in red. So what do we multiply from our problem here? We're going to multiply 1 times 5, and the answer is 5. And where does that go? That goes right there. So I'm going to come back to my page sorter, and now I'm going to clone that page. So what we're doing here is we're setting up every page. Right, so now 4 is identical to 3, and 4 is the page we're on because that's the blue one. So what's the next step? The next step is to subtract. So and right, the students are telling us, we maybe talked about this, or maybe we haven't, maybe the first time they've seen it, so I'm telling them. So what do we subtract? Subtract 6 minus 5, and that equals 1. Where does that happen? Right there. 6 minus 5 is 1. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, wow, that's a pain in the neck to have to go into the page sorter tab and hit clone page every time. It is. There's got to be an easier way to do it. Well, if you notice, that clone page is control D. So you could go back to the computer and do control D, but there's still got to be an easier way, and there is. So I'm going to pause right now, and we are going to customize our toolbar up at the top. So to do that, we're going to start with, in the top right corner here right now, we have the gear icon, and that's going to let us customize our toolbar. From on the left side, those are the actions, things that you can do. On the right side, those are the tools. So what are the actions? Oh, and there it is, clone page. So I'm going to drag that up, and I want it big and kind of towards the middle because that's it's going to be easy to access. So notice when I put it up here, I get that line that covers the whole toolbar. That means it will be a big button. If I move it and put it in one of 
these smaller boxes and it's a smaller button. So I'm going to make it a big one. And now because I moved that one, it made an extra row. So there it is. And while I'm up here, you know, I don't have a smart document camera, so I can just drag that off. I, uh, I don't, I'm not going to the smart exchange. I can drag that off, move that over to get rid of those extra boxes, right? You can, you can go in and add the things that you need. For this lesson, I really need, though, to be able to get to that clone page. So that's going to make it a lot easier. Okay. So we're back here. We did that. We've already cloned that page, so we don't need to continue. So what's the next step? The next step is bring down. So what are we going to bring down? We're going to bring down the 8. Clone page. I hit that button. And you can see, didn't see anything happen, but you can see that now we've got, we're on page 6. So we're back to division. So right now I keep picking up the black pen red pen and the green pen. Is there a quicker way of doing that too? Oh yeah, there is. The pens really don't matter. What matters is when you pick up a pen, right up here, it turns to the pen tool. Right, I put the pen down, it goes back to the arrow, the select tool, pick the pen up, right here it changes to the pens, and then right here the pen tool and you can see I have black, red, green, blue and then some others colors. So I don't have to keep putting a pen down and picking it up. I can just go up and tap the color that I want. And you'll notice that I did the steps in order so I can just keep going like that. So we're back to divide. When I teach it I always draw that again right there and put the five down so they can see what they're dividing. So now we're just going to keep going here. So what are we dividing? 18 divided by 5. And what is that? 3. And the answer is 3. Clone page. Next step. I didn't put down the black pen. I still have it in my hand. But I just tapped the red button up there in the toolbar. Next step is multiply. What are we going to multiply? 3 times 5. 15. Next step. Subtract. What are we going to subtract? We're subtracting 18 minus 15. Next step down. I need to move this down. I didn't plan ahead well enough, so I need to move this down so I can marquee select, drag around all of it, move it down a little. I missed a line in there, but that's okay. So now I can extend the page a little bit. So I can keep that in view. So now clone that page. We're back to dividing. Back to the black. What are we dividing? We're dividing 37 divided by 5. 7. Put our 7 there. Clone the page. Tap red, next step. What are we doing? 7 times 5, 35. Clone page. Subtract. 37 minus 35 equals 
to clone page. Bring down, but we see there's nothing to bring down. So that's where we talked about then maybe instead the two goes up and it becomes a remainder two. So, okay, we've done that. So what? Why would we do that? Why would we take that time? Well, for one, it's effective because you can see step by step what's happening. Two, you may have students who are absent that day. You can print this file out and they are going to have step one. Oh, they'll have a page and they see that. Okay, then what do I do? I multiply. Okay. I see the one and the five. And there's the five. Well, that's where the answer goes. And then I subtract. Six minus five. I see the six minus five. Okay. And they have all of these pages so they can see this problem worked out step by step. But what about more immediate? So you've done the lesson, you do this a couple of times, it's time to start working on homework, get, let the students get started, but you have some students that are going to have trouble. So what if they could come up to the board or sit up close to the board on the floor and they can start here and they can look at this example and they can have their book in front of them and whatever problem they're doing in their book and they can see this independently and go, okay, so what do we do first? First thing we do is divide. So in this example, we did six divided by, oh, so it's the first digit there divided by the first digit. So they can look at theirs on their assignment and they can do that step on their assignment. Okay, now what do we do? simple tap to move to the next page. Now they have step two. So they look at it. So next thing we do is multiply. So one times five. I see the one. I see the five. Uh, okay. And I see where the answer went. Okay. All right. So then they do it on theirs for their assignment, whatever that problem is. Tap. They're on to the next step. So they subtract. Oh, we subtract 6 minus 5. There it is, right there. Okay. All right. So then they do it on their paper. Right? So this allows them, right there, in class, independently, because you might be off working with another group. You might be helping someone else individually. This allows them to individually, independently, review the lesson and get started on their homework. And like I said, it would be very simple to do file, print, and if you've ever printed a PowerPoint, you have an idea of what it looks like. It's very similar. So print what? You've got thumbnails and you can change the size. Medium will give you four. Large would give you only two on a page. Small would give you six or full page. Um, so depending on the age of your students, you know, what would be effective for them, medium or large maybe. So you could print it like that and they have this now they could take home and have that at home to do the same thing because they can go page by page on this, same order that it was on the file, and they can follow along to help them with their homework at home. But from the file menu, export as a PDF, you're going to get the exact same dialog box, and you can create a PDF of the exact same thing. and upload it to your website or whatever, and they have access at home, they can bring it up as a PDF, and they still have the same help at home. So 
that is one way that you can use a smart board as an effective whiteboard and using it like this it's not pretty nothing fades in and fades out and does all kinds of things but to teach this lesson this in my opinion is going to be one of the more effective ways of doing it because all of when it's new content if students don't know the content seeing the things disappearing and erase to reveal and moving things can distract them and instead of helping them to understand the content they may be stuck on how did that happen how did you do that and then that effect is educationally harmful right they will miss the content because they're mesmerized by the fancy things the shiny things do not be afraid to write on the board when you're teaching a lesson but look for ways to make it more effective and using that clone page especially with something where there's a process is going to be a very effective way to teach it and then the option to either print it or save it as a PDF for later reference for your students.